Hello folks, Darren Chang here to introduce you to another crossover day pack. This one is made by Granite Gear and it is called their Bourbonite. It's a 25 liter pack. It retails for around, I think it was $80. And let's take a look around and see what this bag has to offer. Now, one thing I want to make sure I impress upon you is that I have not used this bag. So this is really a first look situation right now. I will certainly make sure that I actually pack this thing full and use it before I can make a full review of this to tell you whether or not it's a good bag. Um, so let me just tell you a little bit about Granite Gear. They're a uh, company that's out of the Midwest. Um, it's certainly not as well known as North Face or Patagonia, um, but similar to Patagonia and North Face, they make simple day packs all the way up to expedition level packs that you would bring uh, mountaineering. Uh, I would say that this Bourbonite fits somewhere in the middle of their commuter packs. So, um, you know, it, it uh, certainly isn't as high end as it could be, but it isn't also the day pack that you would uh, have a middle schooler use to, to bring his or her books to school. All right, so let's take a, a look around the outside first, then we'll dive into the interior. First of all, the material, it appears to be sort of a uh, polyester. Um, I would imagine that they claim that it is somewhat water resistant and I can't deny them that that would be the case. Interestingly, um, they do not have YKK zippers and there is one water guard zipper that you can see here. I'm not sure why the water guard zipper was put on this pocket and not on the pocket that would hold your backpack. Um, you can see all the, the zippers are actually reverse zippers. I always do worry a little bit about companies who cut corners by not using YKK. YKK zippers are the industry standard um, for a reason. They, they last. They don't break down on you. And you never want to pack where the zipper breaks down. Now, that's not to say that these zippers are going to break down, but um, clearly to ensure that your zippers don't break down, you should buy YKK zippers and use them on your bags. So keep that in mind. All right, so you can see here that we have a water bottle pocket. There's one on this side, one on this side as well. I have my Hydro Flask here just to show you that it certainly fits it in there. It's a little risky. There's quite a bit of bottle that's sitting out above the pocket. If this could be maybe another two inches deeper, I'd feel a little bit more secure. Um, however, it is a, uh, it's elasticized at the top and perhaps when the bag is full, it'll stick in there a little bit better. Front of the pack, it has a piece of webbing here, so you could put a blinky light if you use this thing for bicycle commuting. The, uh, and so far as the zippers, I already told you that they're not YKK. They do have these little tabs on them. I have to say that these things feel incredibly cheap. Um, <laughs> I would probably remove them and replace them with something because they, they just don't, they don't have a rubbery tactile feel. They're a hard plastic and it feels like a really kind of cheap plastic at that. So not the best hardware, that's for sure. Nice handle at the top. It's got a good cushion in it, some memory foam in there, so that's usable. No side handles, and that's too bad. Um, so let's uh, flip this over. Or actually, let's take a look at the bottom. So the thing that I always want to have in my pack is ensure that it has a flat bottom so that the pack can actually sit on its own and I can fill it. This isn't quite flat. It actually does slope a little bit um, from front low to the back where it's a little bit higher. So that's kind of a bummer. We'll see if that translates into this thing not being able to stand on its own. All right, so let's flip this over and take a look at the suspension system. I will tell you that uh, when I first looked at this online and saw pictures of it, I was impressed with the suspension system because it did really, as you can probably see in the, uh, the video here, it looked like it had a pretty amazing back here with lots of channels and relief to allow for perspiration to get out of there. Um, but upon closer inspection, you will find that what looks like sort of raised areas, I mean, it certainly is raised up Okay, you can see these islands sort of raised up here to allow for a channel here. There's actually nothing behind these. They're hollow, so they compress incredibly easily. They essentially flatten out entirely. So if this was on your back, it would be not unlike 
having just a flat piece of foam and the yes it is mesh but the mesh is it is actually stuck up it's adhered glued to the foam backing so it's not really going to offer much in the way of ventilation if it's really essentially the foam backing that you have here so it's made to look like a really nice back um, but in fact a lot of corners have been cut here so it's not really it's nice looking it doesn't necessarily translate to this being functionally as nice as it could be um, the shoulder straps themselves they seem to be well designed they have a little bit of a a curve to them which makes sense um, there are webbing there are some um, yep webbing loops here so you could hang maybe a pouch that you would put your cell phone in and you have a certain a, a adjustable sternum strap here which is good again this hardware feels so cheap my goodness i mean i'm again i'm not sure if it's going to fail but it just doesn't feel like great stuff here it's granite gear branded um who knows similar here with these ladder locks that allow you to adjust the shoulder straps hmm it doesn't inspire a ton of confidence i will tell you that it just feels like if there's going to be a failure point it will be in the zippers or this hardware so that's a little disappointing okay so let's get into the interior of the bag and see what this has to offer i'll start with this pocket right here this is the pocket that is the quick access pocket that i would typically put my sunglasses into so here are my sunglasses the no problem fitting them in there Ooh, the only problem is it's a really tight fit there's not dimension to this pocket in any way and there's a very heavy thick piece of foam as you can see there are three panels of foam here one two three and that foam means that it's not very it's strangely unforgiving if you were to pack up the compartment that's just behind this pocket it would actually let's say it's something like your ipad it would then smash your glasses against this foam and maybe damage them so I kind of wish this was a little bit, there was a little more dimension to it, or just put it at the top of the pack where there's a, a less of an opportunity for you to pack your pack tightly at the top and then your glasses would be safe. So this is a strange location for this quick access pocket. So my guess is that this pocket is really actually designed for your cell phone, which is why, why it's so flat. Um, and in that case, it really would do a nice job of protecting your cell phone and the fact that it has a, uh, a weather sealed zipper here leads me to believe even more that this is the place where you'd put your cell phone. So unfortunately, there's not a place for my sunglasses uh, in, in a quick access way, at least with this pack. All right, so let's take a look behind this panel and take a look at what we have here. This is the organizer panel behind. One thing that's very strange here is that to get access to this organizer panel, note that the zipper goes all the way down here on this side, but on this side of the pack, it stops. I'm not quite sure I understand why that would be the case because it makes it very difficult to access this area. It would be much nicer if it just folded all the way at the seam and you could get access to all your stuff here. But anyway, that's their design decision. Um, let's go from the back to the front here. This area right here might be hard for you to tell, this actually is a, a fleece lining area where you could fit a small iPad. There's no way you'd fit one of those large 13 inch iPad Pros. So maybe, you know, a, a 10 and a half inch one would go in there. There's a key ring here. I never use these things. And oh boy, it continues the theme here. This thing feels like the cheapest piece. I don't even, they shouldn't even bother. Uh, that's, it's amazing to me that they would put that kind of hardware there. Um, and unfortunately, this isn't deep enough for you to put your a file folder. So this really is designed primarily for a small tablet. Um, all right. And then just in front of that, you can see we have a zippered compartment. This goes right down to the bottom edge of where you see these mesh pockets. So um, pretty good size. Makes sense. And then in front of this, there's a small pocket. This is really odd. You can see here that we have small pocket medium pocket and slightly larger than medium pocket here this medium pocket certainly could fit my this is a plus size iphone so it could fit that without a problem and there are loops here 
elastic loops, and I would assume that those elastic loops are for you to hang your pens. Um, wouldn't do much good for something like an Apple Pencil because it would just slide all the way through down to the bottom. You'd have to put it into this pocket, which I would have preferred probably not to be at the place where it's so hard to access. They probably should have just made a couple of dividers here and put in, made this your pen and pencil holder area here. You can see here that we have two mesh pockets. None of these things are big enough for one of those big chargers that you get with a, uh, an Apple laptop. So that's kind of a bummer. It's just gonna have to be tossed here into the bottom. All right, so it's an okay organizer. It's not really the greatest, especially annoying that it doesn't open up in a way that I would expect it to open. Okay, so there's the organizer panel. Let's go into the main compartment. And, okay, so it, hmm, again, oddly, it doesn't zip down as far as I would expect it to go. I would want it to zip all the way down to the pockets. There's no reason for it not to. Hmm. So um, here we go, looking into the interior. And you'll see there is a mesh pocket here, zippered mesh pocket. And other than that, nothing else. This is just a big open space, which is good. That's what I want it to have. There is, um, while they do have a lining on this, these surfaces, they don't have a lining on these surfaces. That's, uh, yeah, so obviously it's skimping a little bit there. Typically, uh, a really nice pack um, would be lined throughout the whole interior. Okay, let's go ahead and zip this compartment up. And let's take a look at the laptop compartment. Hmm. Again, it only opens three quarters of the way. That is so odd. And there's no reason for it not to have the zipper go all the way down to here um, to match what happens over on this side. I don't get that. That's it, It's almost like they just wanted to cheap out a little bit on the zippers. And so, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. All right, and um, this is fleece lined only on one side. Again, that's really kind of odd too. So one side is fleece lined, the other side is not. There is a nice thick foam pad on the uh, in the interior of the wall here to allow the pack to have some structure. That is the one thing I like about this pack is it really does have it's a structure to it. It doesn't sort of flop around too much. Um, and there is also light foam between the laptop compartment and the main compartment as well. This fleece feels just about as cheap as you can get. I know this sounds like a theme here, but you know, again, I'm, we're talking about a pack. It's not a terrifically cheap pack. I mean, we're still, you're paying $80 for this. It's not expensive, but it's not that cheap. Um, and frankly, there are other options. I'm thinking off the top of my head, the Patagonia Refugio 28 liter bag. Um, that thing is built much better than this, and it's only $10 more, I think. So, you know, I, I would certainly consider that. Um, Another thing, it let, so let me just show you some other things. So here's the, here's the Patagonia. Obviously the Patagonia is a little bit sportier looking, so it's not gonna have the sort of a, the professional look that you see here, um, but this is way better made. Um, it's got YKK zippers. Um, the interior isn't lined, so you know that's one way in which they certainly um, you know, can, can make it a little bit cheaper. But the material is also so much better. Um, you know, whatever the Patagonia folks use, this stuff is tough. And the design is better. I mean, there's a, a top pocket fleece line for your sunglasses at the top here. There is a, a frankly, a, just a, a better organization pocket here. Uh, so again, given the choice, I would certainly go for the Patagonia, spend an extra 10 bucks for the Patagonia um, rather than this granite gear here. And then if you're really willing to get crazy, you could spend a heck of a lot more. This is a $200 bag by Air. It's called the, the um, what is it called now? The Air Tech bag. Um, and this thing is really built to last. This thing will last you 30 years. And, brilliantly thought out, smart design, 
uh, basically has everything that the Patagonia has, has a more professional look to it, fully lined. Materials are so much better. Not only do they have YKK zippers, but they have incredibly beefy YKK zippers here. Um, so, I don't know. You know, obviously you get what you pay for. This is a $200 bag versus this guy is only $80. Although again, $80 is nothing to shake a stick at. Like the, this Timbuk2 is around $80 is my guess. This Mountain Smith, again, these two are much better built than the Scranic gear. This Mountain Smith is incredibly well built. Um, and that I think is around $80 as well. So um, I don't know, I, I, it doesn't seem like this is money well spent if you go with $80. In fact, I'm feeling like, frankly, it's probably not even worth it for me to pack this bag up and um, try it because there are so many things that are disappointing about it. Sorry, Granite Gear, but this kind of gets a big fat thumbs down from me. Maybe uh, they'll listen to this video and make some changes to this pack and um, come out with a version two of it that'll be much better and something that will pass my muster and allow me to recommend it to you. All right, so go ahead and take a look at my other pack reviews, and I hope this was helpful to you.